Well, hello, internet friends near and far. Welcome to another episode of Parks and Conversation. This is a podcast where we watch a, an episode of Parks and Recreation, and then we talk about it. And uh, my name is Jason, and I'm joined all the way across town by my friend Jeremy. Say hello, Jeremy. Hey, how's it going? It is going so well. It seems like our delay issue is resolved from the last two weeks, which I appreciate. How are you doing? <laughs> it's I good. Knew. As soon as I said, hey, hey, things seem to be going better. I knew it was like, wait for it, Jason. Don't yeah. try to. Don't worry. He's, he's a dad. He knows. <laughs> Jeremy's doing a thing. Uh, <laughs> that's good. I'm glad. That makes it uh, a little, a little like more conversational. Yeah. Instead of wondering, like, I say something and then did Jeremy die? <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm a worst I mean, case scenario thinker. <laughs> It's good. It's good. Uh, not to be too too nerdy about it, but you you watch the Expanse. I'm 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 watching it for the first time. <laughs> yeah, and can I just the, say it, just real quick. I just thought yeah. of something super funny. I, we're talking about the Expanse, but uh-huh. if you died recording a <laughs> podcast, we would know exactly what your last words were. <laughs> good. Uh, well, now <laughs> now not that I'm going to be any more you know self conscious about what I say. <laughs> Thanks for that thought in the back of my head. Sorry. I love I just, you, babe. <laughs> And then you died. I'm gonna. It's gonna be my. my it's gonna be my my command S is from now on. It's like as soon as there's a pause, like, I love you, Terry. That's my wife. So that way, my last words are always gonna be. Yes. I love you, Terry. Mine will be invest in. <laughs> what was it? What? What? I've seen the future. Oh no. Uh, was it crypt- Was it crypto? Was Matt Damon right? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Very rarely was Matt Damon right, no. other than to enforce Skylaw. Um you were mentioning the expanse. Speaking oh, of Skylaw. Yeah, there's no <laughs> yeah. No, there's not a really funny joke, but I just thought I was we were watching it and there was a delay. This um one of the, the characters is talking to her husband who's off planet and they're or they're separated and there's like a, a 30 second delay or something like that, and they're talking over each other. And at first it was really funny because I was like, Oh, this is our podcast. <laughs> yeah. I get it. There you go. So How far are you it. in that watch, show? Watch the expanse, people. Uh, then you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, so we just we're we're in season two. Okay. Yeah. It's good. It, it is really good. I think. I think it's good. No, I mean, like, I know mm. it's good, but in my opinion, it is good as well. Yeah, I'm remembering now the stuff you're talking about, and it's yeah. it, that was actually compelling. Yeah, there's a there's a Martian defector, and I mean, spoilers, yeah. but I won't say anything. Yeah, that's where we're at. So, anyway, yeah, very good. Yeah, how's the how's the, how's the weather over there? Because we can't get started without a weather update. Oh, right, true. Uh, today is sunny and cold, and I. Same here. Uh, yeah, I had to scrape my windshield to take my daughter to school for a half day. Mm. Um, so it feels like just wasted effort on a half day of school. So, yeah, sunny, cold. Uh, the uh, Tuesday chance of mixed snow and rain. <laughs> but uh, Moving. yeah, we'll see. All right. We'll see. Uh, Jeremy, uh, today we are talking about season five, episode two, the soda wow. tax. But before we jump into that, we have an email. Last week, we asked our listeners to tell us their favorite Sinbad movie. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, I can't believe I can't believe I forgot. <laughs> Dang it. Because uh, Andy was talking about the White House, which is yes. famously where Sinbad lived in first kid. So, um, so listener Matt emailed uh and the sub- the subject line when it showed up in my inbox was sinbad <laughs> and i was like why did matt send me this <laughs> and then i remembered yeah. oh right we asked people to send us this i um, think that, that's what i'm talking about as far as sinbad's career i think that's just what it was it's like oh yeah sinbad yeah yeah um so uh matt says jingle all the way gets my vote for favorite movie because it's the only sinbad movie i've seen multiple times uh, in the last 15 years, my secondary vote goes to the time he played himself as a mental patient alongside Matchbox 20's Rob Thomas on an episode of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Yes. Third vote goes to Shazam, which I clearly only remember because I'm from another timeline. Um, <laughs> so, uh, which is a, such a great joke. <laughs> That's funny. Listener, if you are like listener Matt, like you fell through a wormhole into this this timeline. And you remember a movie called Shazam with Sinbad. You are living in what we call the Mandela effect, 
where you believe a thing that never happened. Um, and you may be confusing it with a movie with Shaquille O'Neal called Kazam, where Shaquille O'Neal played a genie. Um, but uh, yeah, I, there's so many people who believe that Shazam, starring Sinbad, is a real thing. And uh, I, I love this, this universe that we're in, where it's not a real thing. Um, Matt goes on to say, still loving the show, even all the tangents. Looking forward to when you guys tackle more series in the future, because this is a part of a longer project that we are, are working through the, uh, the Michael Schur universe. And so started with Parks and Rec, but that includes The Office, Brooklyn Nine-Nine, uh, The Good Place, maybe even Rutherford Falls, if we get around to it. But I should watch that then. Mm, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Spoilers, we might not get to it. You know, uh, what's uh, the best part of that show is the the gentleman who runs the casino. He's great. He's I've great seen zero it. episodes. Yeah, he's great in everything I've seen him in. I cannot remember his name because I'm terrible. But uh, yeah, he's just such a great actor. And he's so like dry comedically. It's, it's wonderful. So Ed Helms plays Andy Bernard in everything. So sure, that's not super great. But yeah. Um, Anyway, that was our list, our listener email for today. And hey, thank uh, listener. Thanks, Matt. You, Matt, we appreciate it. Uh, listener, if you want to chime in on any other of the movie that Sinbad has been in um, that we have not mentioned, then please. Um, or any movies he hasn't been in. Yeah. What's your favorite movie that, that Sinbad hasn't been in? Really opens up the conversation now. Casablanca. Yeah. <laughs> it's a great movie. Uh yeah, I would love. To, oh, my goodness. Who do I talk to in the Sinbad, Sinbad universe? I would love for him to go back and just remake classic movies. <laughs> like, now, do you want him to be like the main character or is this yes. an Eddie Murphy situation where he plays like different, like all of the characters? I want him to deep fake himself into. I don't know what deep fakes are uh, to deep fake himself into every movie. Uh, like gone, gone with Sinbad and Gone with the Wind as the Scarlett O'Hara. <laughs> Sinbad in Citizen Kane. Yes, as, as Rosebud. As the Rose the sled, the sled, yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that would be a worthwhile project. So Sinbad who I, in cars. Uh, yes. He could, be all, all, he could be all the cars. Just just really bad, like deep fake faces of Sinbad's face on all of the cars. Yes. Yeah. I think I think this is something that America can get behind. So vote for me, 2024. I will. I will get Sinbad on my security detail to protect my children. First kid and a second kid. And then I'm I'll looking say, up how to deep fake stuff. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to get some interesting calls from the NSA. So just be careful. <laughs> um, so if you, uh, listener, have some movies that you like, <laughs> which Sinbad has not been in, but maybe he could be someday if this campaign gets going, <laughs> um, email us parksandconversation at gmail.com. We look forward to hearing from you. Uh, and with all that said, let's jump into the episode proper, because uh, this episode is I, I, I enjoy this episode. There are mm -hmm. funny things in the, the in all three of the plots, um, but there are things in Ben Ben's plot in particular that I say all the time, just <laughs> as like exclamations of joy. And so I uh, this is probably one of the most formative episodes for me uh, as a person. So today on a very special parks and conversation. Um, yeah, so there's three main plots. The, the, the main thing is the, the driver for the overall arc is Leslie is getting ready for her first council vote. And she has proposed a soda tax on uh, Pawnee to help fight against childhood obesity. And so she runs into trouble in that. Uh, Andy wants to get in shape to become a police officer and he needs to get the physical conditioning squared away. And uh, so Chris and Tom are going to hype him up. And then Ben is in D.C. and he's running into some trouble in his office managing people. Um, and sometimes the most difficult people are the closest to you. <clears throat> yeah, we all learned something today. So let's start with the biggest bummer of the three. Let's start with Leslie's story. Um, so, Perfect. Um, 
it's funny, but it's like kind of one of those things where it's just like, yeah, this is Leslie doing government work, which if you said, I'd like to do a comedy about government work, doesn't sound very funny. And this is an example where it's like, yeah, there's a lot of this, a lot of, a lot of this. So, um, so it starts with Leslie and Anne in the courtyard going over this, the results of the study on diabetes in Pawnee. And Anne brought a prop, uh, which is a, a giant container of sugar that the average uh, pa- um, Pawnee child consumes from soda every month. And it's a lot of sugar. And it's like, one of those clear like an containers. Like impossible amount of sugar. Yeah. And uh, Leslie is like impressed with the, the visual. And as she's talking about how gr- this is like gross, that this much sugar is being consumed, she's also licking her finger and putting it in the sugar <laughs> to consume sugar. And she's like, what did you put in this sugar? It's so good. <laughs> um, and then it goes to the talking hack, uh, head ta- uh, talking about this proposed uh, tax on sugar. Um, and I love the the names of the restaurants that she's trying to convince that to try to be healthier for uh, Pawnee citizens. Um, and uh, we've got Ponch Burger, Big and Wide, The Fat Sack, <laughs> Colonel Plum's Slop Trough, which was formerly Sioux Salad until we ran that out of town. <laughs> <laughs> which <laughs> finally... Sue salad has been a blight on this town for too long. But uh, let's but let's tax the soda because that's right. not that's that's unhealthy. Yeah. So um, yeah. So then Ron shows up with a bag of punch burger, a giant soda, um, and <laughs> essentially is like, "Look, listen, you're trying to babysit everybody, but I'm an American citizen, so I'm going to get all this stuff. And I'm going to eat it all." Um, and a, in number, a, a number two double bacon grenade deluxe, <laughs> yes. hash browns, and an egg. Well, it's hash browns, chili cheese fries, and one poached egg. (laughs) (laughs) And and it's like, ugh. (laughs) Yeah. Um, And also 64 ounces of Sweetums Sugar Splash. And um, yeah, so he's, you know, trying to show Leslie, like, I'm going to do this, and you're taxing my freedoms, essentially. Um, So, so yeah, so he is uh, basically saying, uh, in his way, like saying, don't do this. Uh, but then Leslie's like, despite our uh, differences, I need to thank you um, for all that you've done. You hired me. You've supported me. How can I ever repay you? And Ron's like <laughs> drinking his soda. And you get the last little straw sounds. And like, get me a refill. And uh, which is funny to me that Leslie never does that. She never gets it for him. Um, so then we get to Leslie meeting with Catherine, who is a lobbyist for big burger in their town i guess um and uh Catherine, big, punch, big punch big punch <laughs> um yeah and so they're trying to talk to her about this tax um and uh they start with the small size which is a whopping 64 ounces uh and uh and Catherine's like yeah it's a, a great deal for the consumer um are we putting bargains on trial and and it, and let's say, like, how can you call this a small? And and then Catherine says, well, there is a smaller size for those consumers. It's called the little swallow. And it's like <laughs> a, basically what the dentist gives you a size cup to rinse out uh, with um, mouthwash. You know, it's that little tiny cup. Uh, and she's like, does anybody buy that? And some girls buy them for their dollhouses. <laughs> so um, and uh, and she's like, why would you buy something so small with just for a nickel? You can get 64 ounces. I mean, this is the deal we're trying to. Uh, make money and then um they also have a 120 ounce option as leslie points out other people call it a gallon um (laughs) and then there's a 512 ounce version that they call child size (laughs) and let's say how's this child size and uh this is one of my favorite jokes (laughs) in all of parks and rec uh it's roughly the size of a two-year-old child if the child were liquefied (laughs) Which, when you think about it, is pretty gruesome. <laughs> it's disgusting, <laughs> but it's also but. <laughs> a real bargain at one fifty nine. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's. I mean, Catherine's making a lot of good points here. That's true. Like, we're saving you money. Yeah. Um, and having worked, did you ever work in fast food? Uh, um, I I work I I flip burgers, but not like for a chain. But yeah, yeah, probably close enough. What does that even mean? What are you talking about? <laughs> what 
you flipped like it was, burgers, it was but not for a, what are you talking about? Like not for a national chain. Like it was for a small like roadside hamburger joint. Okay, so it was yeah. for like yeah. So you sold soda? Actually, we no, we sold milkshakes. Where was we this place? I don't think we had soda. Was this down in uh, down in Lewis County? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we didn't have. I don't know if they had the technology for soda machines. That's not. <laughs> that's not true. This place. It was just. It was just a roadside. It was only open during the summertime. And uh, yeah. Anyway, wh- where I, where did you work? I worked at Round Table Pizza. Oh yeah. Oh okay. Yeah, I was a pizza worker, as I my daughter that. calls me. <laughs> Which sound, makes it sound real dirty. Sling in the za. <laughs> the other day we were talking about something (laughs) and she's like you've had so many jobs and i've had the same job i've worked for the same organization (laughs) for 17 years um and so like when when she says i've had so many jobs it's like i was a kid right (laughs) that's what you do to a lot of jobs when you're a kid um yeah you you get a new job every year yeah and she laughs so hard at every time she talks about when i worked in roundtable because she's like when you were a pizza worker uh, (laughs) wow yeah, it's just like the meaning. It's like, why are you talking to me that way? I'm your father. Um, and uh, but what we, we we knew how cheap the soda was. Mm-hmm. And like when we made it so that you we, I was there when they made the switch so, so that you could get refills. Like they put the soda dispenser, they turned it around on the counter and said, we trust you with this. It's a lot of power. <laughs> yeah. And we were just like my boss, Merle, was just like. Oh man, we're still making so much money. Every time somebody goes up to that thing, I just hear money, money, <laughs> money, 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 money. Um, and so, yeah, it costs nothing. And you can get, if you can get people into your store with a big soda and then spend tons of money on beef product, you're just like, yeah, do it. So anyway, um, yeah, get, so a, get, a, get a soda machine, kids. That's what we're saying. Moral of this story is get a soda For, machine, Coke forget Zero. Lemonade stands. Just go out to the side of the road with a soda machine. That's probably not a bad idea. Well, it's what we do here. You know what, listener? Find a way. Like dinosaurs in Jurassic Park. Um, so then uh, as they're continuing this meeting. I love our girl. Oh, they yeah. also uh, talk about how, you know, it. If consumers should have the right, Catherine says consumers should essentially have the right to drink what they want, but we do provide healthier options like water zero. <laughs> and let's like, yes, let's talk about this because it sounds like there's zero calories, but in fact, it has 300 calories. And let's, uh, Catherine's like, well, the zero stands for how much water is in it, which is zero. <laughs> so it's totally true. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so if you want zero calorie water, water, try diet water zero light. It only has 60 calories. <laughs> so um yeah which is so funny and uh, so then as they're wrapping up this meeting uh Catherine says that look there are restaurants here this bill is going to affect them they're probably gonna have to lay off about 100 people which i don't know how they could estimate that because the people of Pawnee will pay the dumb tax because they want their sugar they want their sugar yeah um and the tax is going to be like a couple cents right it's not going to it's not going to lead them to bankruptcy. So she's trying to like create a tension point here because Leslie doesn't want, she's a new council person. She doesn't want to lose a uh, job, people to lose their jobs and then she lose voters. Um, and so this is a, this is a problem. Um, and so now Leslie and Anne are like, well, she's bluffing. We can't know, but then cuts to the next day and there's a headline, Leslie Nope, soda tax forces, massive layoffs. No, this is the pl- press release that's going out uh, that right. will go out if they do it. And like they, the press release itself is like, this is happening, which it's not. Um, but this is how lobbyists work. Um, and Leslie's response is to eat some of the sugar from the giant bat that Anne <laughs> has given her. Um, so, um, so yeah, so they try to figure out what to do. Um, and they decide to have a, a town forum which is always the best idea because Leslie mm-hmm. wants to hear from the people. Yeah. Do you need this? Do you want it? Yeah. And she's like, I propose this, vo- this bill, this tax, but I'm not sure if I like, I want to hear from you. It's your town. What do you want to do? Um, and uh, so one of the first people to speak talk says that I work at Colonel Plumps and word around the slop trough. He's <laughs> been talking about laying people off. Um, and so people are like, yeah, yeah, that's not good. And then another person is like, 
my husband started drinking those giant sodas and he gained 100 pounds in three months. Consequently, we haven't had sex in 10 years. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> and and is like, I thought you just started this in three months. It's like, we have a lot of other problems. <laughs> uh, so town forums. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, a dude stands up and says, all taxation is theft. So if you can tax me, then I should be able to do this. And he grabs a woman's purse and, and Leslie knows this guy, Grover. Give the purse back. And he's looking at it and he's like, there's a lot of pill bottles in here. <laughs> and the lady is just like smiling like, yes. <laughs> yes, there are. Uh, and so uh, back to the town forum. It goes away to some other stuff. It goes back to the ta- town forum. And uh, and then another person says, what's next? Income tax? And Leslie's like, are you not paying your income tax? Um, and this guy is in town forums often. Um, and he's like, whether I pay income tax is none of the government's business business. And they're like, well, actually it is. Um, and so I was like, well, you don't know my name or what I look like. So good luck. <laughs> then another guy, uh, stands up, says we should tax all bad things like racism and women's vaginas. <laughs> so those are the two bad things. Um, and, uh, and it's like, we're not taxing anyone's genitals. And I was watching this this morning before my daughter went to school and she was like, how'd they even do that? <laughs> I was like, I don't know. Right. <laughs> um, That's, that was, Hey, that was my question as well. Like, wait, how's that work? <laughs> So this guy uh, is like, all right, then let's get out of here. And like a bunch of old, old men leave with this, this person. And one of them, one of them had one of the giant punch burger sodas. Yes. Yeah. Um, and so then they decide to do a straw poll and hold up a green if you agree or a red if you disagree. And that basically it's like, we do think this ha- half and half say they get able to get help the people be healthier, but also think it is unfair to consumers. So it was completely useless, like most polling. Um, I like that they did a straw poll for the soda tax. That's funny. I didn't even think of that because they weren't using straws. It would have been better if they were using straws, <laughs> like green straws and red straws, and then mm-hmm. give them all to the sea turtles. <laughs> they need help drinking the water. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's exactly it. Uh, <laughs> all right. We do not condone killing sea turtles with straws. No. There's no. better ways to do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jeremy. Straws, straws take forever. You are you are quite the heel today in WWE terms. <laughs> you have turned you have turned, my friend. So um all right. So the it comes back to the actual uh council meeting. And uh they Leslie's been super stressed. Um, and, uh, and so she, to help her couldn't sleep. So, uh, she got up early at five and went to punch burger for a pick me up and couldn't decide what soda she wanted. So she put all of them into one cup and you know, what it tastes like disgusting. So okay. oh, no, hold on. Yes, this is okay. Go good. Uh, what, what do you call it? What do I call it? Yeah. What do you call? So, so when we've had this discussion with people, when you go to the all you can drink soda fountain uh, before they had the cool touchscreen ones and you could get anything you wanted, like when uh, round table pizza turned the soda yep. machine around yep. and you can get your own refill and you had ultimate soda power. Yeah. And you could you you could mix and match, which is just insane to me. But then somebody says, what if you did them all? What would that taste like? All of them. Mm-hmm. Diet included. Yeah. Diet included. The tea one. Sure. Power. Sure. Right. Right. I mean, I, I mean, we're getting down the road, but like back in the day, there wasn't even diet. So it was like, so, you know, what, yeah. so regionally, I don't know if there's a regional thing or if it's just, I don't know what kids you hung out with, but there's lots of different names for mm-hmm. that. What, mm-hmm. what did you guys call it? My circle of, of smart people, intellectuals, <laughs> we called it a graveyard. What did you call it? I, I too called it a graveyard. Okay. Uh, um, I have heard other people call it a suicide, a suicide. Yeah. And when I heard, first heard somebody call this a suicide, I got very sad. Yeah. Like, because... why, why would you call it that? But then I was thinking about it. Like, why were we calling it a graveyard? And so my rationale now, I think I thought about it since then, uh, is I call it a graveyard because there's one of everything in there, <laughs> like a graveyard. <laughs> All and the suicide people in there. And I think the suicide is because you had this one chance for a soda and you chose to make it disgusting. Yeah. You killed your shot. You, you killed your shot. Yeah. I don't know. But uh, yeah, I'm glad we had this conversation. 
There's so, also in the in the south, I think. And they call it what in the south? Go. Nothing. No, 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 no. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> okay. Um, that's funny. In the south. That's it. And um, yeah, I just I can't. Never mind. All right. Yeah. Well, I'm glad we squared this away. Listener, let us know. Do you know other terms for this? Uh, email us parks and conversation at gmail.com. Also include what other movies you'd like Sinbad to be in <laughs> and uh, it'll be good. So, um, yeah. So Anne asks her like, what are you going to do? How are you going to vote? And she's like, I don't know if I vote for the tax, then, you know, they want, they might try to recall me if I vote against it. I might be betraying my own bill. And, uh, and then she starts talking about floating in this giant river of ambiguity. I'm under a warm waterfall of uncertainty. And Anne's like, do you just have to pee real bad? It's like, yes. Um, <laughs> so, because you drank all that soda. Um, but she's lost her way. And so she's not sure what to do. And so they start, they cut to the scene where they vote. And Hauser votes I. And, uh, and then it gets to Leslie. And uh, Leslie throws up. In what is, I think, the most effective throw up scene that I have seen in a long time. Because <laughs> it's not over the top. Right. But you can definitely tell, like, vomit is coming out of her face, right? Like, she's doing <laughs> She's really selling it. It's not just like gagging. Uh, but like, there's there's some noise that goes along with throwing up. Um, yeah. Those were my notes in that scene. <laughs> it's like, this is a really good job. <laughs> my thing is, why is throw up scenes? Why are throw up scenes so funny? Uh, because we all do it and we all don't want to do it. <laughs> it's, it's throwing it's just up. So, they're just so, so funny. I don't know why. <laughs> well, like stand by me. But the Barfarama, I think it is imprinted in us <laughs> in, at a young age. Like, this is awesome. <laughs> I just think of Chunk in Goonies when he's telling the story. <laughs> yes. And, yes. <laughs> and the, the uh, um, oh, the something Ellie's, I can't remember the first part of the names. They they start gagging and wanting to puke too. Yeah. <laughs> just, just like in the story. It's so good. Frat- Fratelli's, that's right. Um, yeah. I, I like, uh, I, I think part of it is like we know how embarrassing and awful we feel when we are about to throw up and as we are throwing up but we also know how awesome it is those 30 seconds after you throw up right we're like oh finally I'm and you have in again and you have no control i mean it is just yeah. it, it is everything laid out bare to the universe <laughs> like it is just this is happening yeah and listener if you're getting queasy right now <laughs> um sorry <laughs> but i i have been I think I have like a really good over the top throw up noise like <laughs> that, like I can just do like as like an imitation that one. I'm actually throwing up. Um, I think I'm really good at it, but it's too much to be believed in a situation like what Leslie's going through right now. And so it's like, you know, if I were in this, this role, I probably would have gone too far. Um, and if you, if you ever run into me, just ask, can you do your throw up noise? And I'll be like, who are you? <laughs> uh, <laughs> And then oh, parks and conversations. <laughs> like, oh, 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 yeah. OK. Uh, and then I'll uh, I'll go for it. Jason's number one are. party trick. <laughs> well, I don't go to a lot of parties and I don't know why. That's why it's <laughs> your only that's, a, that's your best party trick. You know, I tried to learn card tricks. Um, card? Card tricks, like oh. sleight of hand card tricks and stuff. Um, and that didn't really do any any good. And so, um, yeah, so I'm going to stick with the, 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 the throw up noise. Like, where, where am I going to use these card tricks? <laughs> yeah, I, sometimes I don't even have any cards on me. But I always have my throat and my face. So always I can make the noise. Um, so, yeah, so she throws up and calls for a recess. And I love her response. She tried to play a goal like, gentlemen, it appears that I may have fallen ill. And then she's like, <laughs> maps might I suggest that we have a and then throws up again. Can we take a recess with her head in the garbage can, um, which I love. Um, so, yeah, so she's a hot mess. And they're like, I don't know what to do. I feel like I barfed up a gallon of sugar water. I'm a mess. Uh, and they're in this recess. And then everything just seems upside down. And I just am not. I was used to be so sure of myself. Now everything's different. And then Jerry comes in his only scene in the whole episode where he's like, his hands are stuck together. Do you guys know how to dissolve super glue? <laughs> and Anne's just like, well, not everything's different. So 
um, which is a good deployment of Jerry. And so then Leslie goes to ask Ron what to do. Um, and Ron's first response is, did you get that soda re- refill I asked for? Um, still no, no. And, uh, and so, you know, she's like, Leslie, Leslie's saying like, I have to go back and vote in 20 minutes. I don't know what I'm going to do. And Ron's like, you'll figure it out. He's like, I, it, they might want to fire me. And Ron's response is, I tried to fire you. Um, and Leslie cut, doesn't believe him. Um, but he's like, here, look at your file. And there were four different times that Ron tried to fire Leslie. Um, and, uh, and Leslie is unbelieved, uh, is not believing all of this. And, um, and she says like, why do you, I don't understand. Why were you trying to fire me? And says like, he drove me crazy, but I decided that I would rather have somebody who was, had conviction than somebody who was just kissing up. Um, and so he, he would withdrew all of his attempts to fire her because she knows what she believes and she stands up for for what she believes. And uh, and so it's like, oh, this is nice. Ron, Ron recognizes. Yes, they're very different, but they need each other. So um, as she's trying to figure out what to do, Ron says, uh, here, take this compass. All great adventurers need one. Um, my question is, why does he have a compass in his desk? Like, is he getting lost? Why does he have a landmine? I mean, who knows? Well, we will know why he has a landmine <laughs> later. That's true. That's true. But, uh, which is so great. <laughs> um, yeah. So, um, yeah. So Leslie's like, thank you. But as far as all this firing stuff goes, I won't forget. And I will never forgive you. And Ron's like, there you are. There she is. Um, and so that cuts back to the council and Leslie votes in favor, strongly in favor, measure passes. Um, and yes, she knows that um this is a, this was a risk but she voted her conscience and she believes the lady is totally bluffing um but uh yeah point of order here the jeremy jam counselor is not the jeremy jam that we will come to know and absolutely love yeah yeah so it's a mystery where does jam come from so when when will he show up we'll see probably really soon um so yeah Anything else from that that first arc? No. All right. Second arc. So it's just other other than it's just a big setup arc. Mm-hmm. It's just a yeah. big setup setup plot device. Right. Second arc. We go. are we're looking at Chris and uh, Andy and Tom. They're trying to get Andy in shape for the police officer training mm-hmm. um, or police officer tryouts. Uh, and so uh, Chris and Tom come in to try to help him work out. And Donna's like, "Where are you guys working out?" And uh, Chris says the community college and she's like super into like watching yeah. people work out. Nice. The vibe. And, uh, and she's like, where are you going? And the community college is like, man, it's too far. <laughs> so, um, and so the, uh, so it goes to a talking head with Andy talking about uh, everything he has to do. Um, and he says like, you have to be able to run two miles in under 25 minutes. It's like, that's a typo, right? I mean, that's humanly impossible. Um, and then Chris responds, when you are able to focus your mind and your body, anything is possible. And Tom's hypes him up. Anything is possible. <laughs> so, so then they go out to uh, the track and we see Chris and Andy running and Tom is in a pace car uh, <laughs> because uh, yeah, of course he is. He spent all kinds of money to get a pace car uh, for Andy's pace, which is not fast. Um, and so they're going, going, going. And Andy looks like he's trying so hard. And, uh, and he's not moving very fast at all. And I used to run a lot and I've done half marathons. And, uh, at the end of my first half marathon, my kids were there, my wife was there and they, I saw them and they were waving at me and I was like, I'm going to really impress them with how fast I'm going to move right now. And I, I gave it my all at the end of that 13.1 miles. Um, and I, I, I felt proud of my accomplishment. And then somebody showed me the video of me running to the end of the thing. <laughs> and it was not unlike Andy in this scene. <laughs> so it was so sad. It was just so sad. Um, and so I felt him. I felt it in my bones. Um, and, uh, and so, and, uh, and Andy's response is like, it's still horrible. I'm going to die. He starts taking off his shirt and he lays down on the track. Um, and, uh, and Tom's like, what are you doing? Um, and, and Chris is like, it's not, now's not the time to, for criticism. 
what was his time is 20 minutes, 29 minutes, 43 seconds, uh, which is not bad for the first time. Like for the shape Andy's in to try to run that far. Like this is like, dude, you should be like stoked. You're not that's, far from where you need to be. That's eight laps. Yeah. And like that's a lot. Yeah. But his response here is I'm never going to be a cop. I'm going to have to be a robber. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. So Andy's like, oh, come on, hang in there. I'm going to go drive around in my pace car. And Chris is like, I'm proud of you. Not because of what you did, which was terrible, but because <laughs> of what I'm going to be able to get you to do. I'm so proud of me. <laughs> and he's like, thanks, man. Me too. <laughs> we have so much work to do. <laughs> I'm so proud of me. So, um, yeah. So then next time we see this crew, uh, Tom has a talking head. We're talking about his modifications to the pace car, speaker system, Mad Men bar iPod doc, orange racing stripe, uh, to as a homage to Han Luis Nissan in Fast and the Furious Tokyo Drift. Heck yeah. Um, and ne- his response Nissan is Sylvia. No one has noticed. <laughs> so, uh, because it's dumb. Um, do you watch the Fast and the Furious movies? Yes. You do? You like, you've seen all of them? I've not, I haven't seen all of them. I've missed the last two, I think. All right, man. Because they, wow. they just started, they started getting ridiculous. So when we talk Fast and Furious, then are you also into the Hobbs and Shaw? No. Like spinoff? I haven't, no. I haven't seen those either. That's okay. just too far, man. Come on. All right. I mean, really, though, what's the difference between this and the Marvel movies? Yeah, they're it's both, just, they're superhero movies for cars. Yeah, they're both thoroughly ridiculous. Um, but it's one of those things that, like, I would watch them. But I also don't want anybody to know I'm watching them. Oh, it's great. It's just, it's entertainment, man. Yeah. Okay. Thank it's you. Okay. So I'll I won't. I, I won't judge you. Somebody oh, else will. I'm not going to talk about it publicly. Right. Yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> that's what am I? Some kind of creep. Um. Anyway. So. Um. Yeah. There's a good. If you if if you look it up, like it's actually a pretty good uh, pretty good rep uh replica. You did yeah, a good job making it, it look like uh like the car. Yeah. I don't understand why he would want to do that, but there's a lot of things about Tom I don't understand. <laughs> So, um, so yeah, so Chris is trying to keep motivating him, keep him going. And he asks like, why are you doing this for? He's like, for me and April, I think she's awesome. I love her. She's all I care about in the world. And Chris is like, yes, yes, yes. All of this love and family. What else? And Andy's like, nothing at all. <laughs> and then <laughs> That's Chris, it. Chris explains why he exercises, which is, was because when he was a baby, he had a rare blood disorder. Suppose that he needed to feel like his body was in tip top shape. So it doesn't destroy me, leaving me to die alone. <laughs> It's sadder and sadder as he's saying this. And it's like, great, you got yours. I got mine. Let's go run till I buke. <laughs> so um, this leads to sadness in Andy. Um, and so uh, and Chris well, and Chris. Yeah. So he's like, all right, let's do this. New, re- new, new Chris spiral. Yeah. Uh, so he's like, why do you run? I run for April. I run for love. Um, and uh, Andy takes off like Tom's like, all right, play is on your mark. Boom, go. And Andy takes off. And and Chris uh, is like, it doesn't move at all. <laughs> just lays he down, lays like, down like Andy did. Um, his response is, uh, "There's something wrong with my body. My legs aren't working. I'm broken. <laughs> I need to go to the hospital right away." Um, zero. So, it doesn't even matter. Yeah. So <laughs> so, really, so zero to to nihilist in, in sixty yeah. seconds. Yes, because Chris is a creature of extremes. Um, and so they come, come back to him staring out the window in his office and Tom and Andy come and like, Hey, did you find everything? Um, and, uh, Chris said the tests and blood work came back and the te- news is terrible. They found nothing. The silent killer. <laughs> and he's like, Oh no. <laughs> I think Andy thought like nothing exists in him. <laughs> like, they found nothing. Like they took my blood and there was no blood. <laughs> there was nothing. I took it, but there was nothing. There was nothing in it. Yeah. Just water zero. <laughs> Which has zero water. <laughs> um, and so Tom's like, that means everything's okay. So why didn't you come? And Andy or, you know, Chris is tr- in this doom loop that he's in. And, and Andy's like, yeah, you should have been there. I hit my minimum requirement. Dibs on minimum band champion. <laughs> you want the band name minimum requirement? No, doom loop. Doom loop. Yeah, oh, I, I bet there's probably already like a Norwegian metal band called Doom Loop. <laughs> Although Minimum Champion is a pretty great name too. Yes, it is. Minimum Minimum Champion. It's like um, an emo. That's a great emo band name. Yeah, and you barely try. Like everything's turned down to like 
the lowest volume. Uh, and it's kind of normal chord. Um, Nothing so, rhymes. Yeah. <laughs> they don't even try. <laughs> it's just a blank CD. <laughs> but it's a burned one, too. It's not even like... It, it, yeah, it's burned with just noise, like room noise. Right, yeah. But it, no, it's like it's just a Sony CDR that, that yeah, they got yeah. a hundred pack from Costco. Right. And right. they duplicated room noise. <laughs> but they have different tracks of room noise. So exactly. This is like, my like, living room. It, this is my bathroom. This, yeah, house, this, is what, right? this is what the living room sounds like. Bathroom sounds like kitchen sounds like the that's garage. too much that's too much effort already. That's just that's a concept album. But then you can imagine, like you say, you they like, well, why did you put any of this effort? It's like, well, I want you to imagine the rest of it. <laughs> right. This is where I was really, really sad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was sad that the CD is not going to sell anything. And I invested $25. Um, the cover art is not even, doesn't have anything on it. It's just the, they just turned the Sony cover thing, you know, with like the red and the blue and the space age graphics, just yeah. turn it around. So it's white. <laughs> um <laughs> I think this is not a terrible idea. My mine would be like they they just get a whole bunch of those those family like the the inserts that they put in picture frames that are mm-hmm. somebody else's family and it says mm-hmm. by eight by ten and they just cut those out and put it in. <laughs> you know like, what they should do. They, they, they should. Should. <laughs> this is a real this is a real band. I think we should start a Patreon. Um <laughs> but it should be like the house, right? And <laughs> It's rooms. And then the the only text on the cover is music or sounds to browse Zillow by. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Let's do this. (laughs) And you know, you know, your host when your parents give it to you because they're like, you need to leave. (laughs) Yeah. Is is this the kind or if they find it in your room, is this the kind of stuff you're into? (laughs) I'm just so disappointed in you. Um, you know, Mom, I'm watching Fast and Furious. <laughs> I'm watching Fast and Furious and browsing Zillow properties. Those don't even have buildings on them. I looked at I looked at property at the coast <laughs> like a couple weeks ago. Uh huh. Just like because you know it was uh, you know it was a time where I was like I I should really plan a vacation. I love going to the coast. Um, and then I was like I should just buy something. Just every time, every, every time, time, like I every should buy time. some property out here. And Man, we come here once a year. We should really, really invest in a property. <laughs> I should live out here. <laughs> um, but uh, the now Zillow is sending me emails every day about empty lots. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> you may be interested in this. <laughs> it's like, oh, look at all that grass. What are those trees? Anyway, um, you have yeah, a sand, so, you have a sandbox. Yeah, basically. Um, anyway. So Andy's like, I'm, I need to, you know, uh, keep going here. Uh, and Chris is like, everything is meaningless. This is the contrast that's happening. And so, uh, Andy does a run for some more laps and he leaves. And while Andy's gone, Tom's like, Hey man, I know maybe Andy's right because, you know, Andy's running because he's got a family and you're thinking about how you don't have one. Um, and every time something goes wrong, you spiral like crazy. So maybe you should see a therapist. And I hope I'm not out of line. Right. And uh, and then Chris is like, no, you're you're absolutely in, as in line as a person can be. Um, and uh, he decides at this moment that he needs to he agrees. I need to see a therapist. And he comes back. It's like, what was my time? Tom says, I don't know. Forty three. <laughs> to which Andy's response. New record. Um, it was actually it was actually thirty one. Oh, wow. So, so good. So. Then it goes to a cut, a talking head of Chris talking about how he's always tried to achieve external goals. Um, but now he needs to climb the Mount Everest of his mind. <laughs> so this sets up a conversation or a, a, an arc where we see Chris in therapy, um, meeting Dr. Chris, uh, Dr. Nygaard. The Nygaardians. The, the fan theory is Chris is Dr. Nygaard. <laughs> so um, I, let's see if we note that. Uh, in the future. Um, yeah. So I love this arc, that lo- little arc there, just Andy's shift in motivation and Chris's contrary shift in demotivation. Um, just makes me laugh. So, all right. Now my favorite of this arc, which has had the most shaping of my life, um, 
in April and Ben are in DC and Leslie sent them care packages, uh, including waffle mix, JJ Diner's mug, new pajamas, a lot of stuff. And then Ben sees a little note box, one of 12, and there's more boxes coming. Uh, April gets an, a, a gift from Andy as well. And so a stuffed three-legged dog to remind them of champion. And also a note saying, you're way better at laundry than me. Can you please do mine and send it back to me? <laughs> and, um, and then, thanks. Love you. Mount rest rules. Mount, mouse rat rules. Um, and then P.S. Please hurry. I've been wearing a bandana as underwear for three days now. And there's a picture of him just in bandana and no underwear. And, no underwear. Um, and uh, Ben note, rightly notes, it's horrifying. And April's response is, I love him so much. <laughs> <laughs> I love uh, how much effort Andy took to send his laundry and and take a picture of himself in a bandana. Yeah. And he probably but, did it because he knew but, Leslie was paying for all of this freight anyway. That's true. That's true. <laughs> so I was like, let me just get this in here. So yeah. Um oh man. That is really uh I, it's a great open. Um with Andy. I, I just love that Chris Pratt is willing to do these kinds of things as well. Like yeah. <laughs> Chris, will you wear this bandana uh, for a photo that will be on screen for less than one second? <laughs> and he's like, absolutely, I will. Chris, uh, will you strip down your underwear and lay down on the track for the scene? Absolutely, I will. Yeah, <laughs> he's he's just all in 100% like a golden retriever. Um, so, all right. So then next scene in the DC office, Ben comes out uh, going over everybody's reports and he just very frustrated with the consistency of fonts. Um, and so he wants consistent font usage, uh, and April's like agreeing with him. And so he lays down the law times new Roman across the board, no <laughs> Geneva, no Garamond, definitely no papyrus. And pa- April's like papyrus. Are you kidding me? There's no place for that in a professional office setting. It's, it's true. You guys absolutely true. Seriously. Um, yeah. And so, uh, Ben has been just super annoyed with these interns because they're not, performing and he's like they need to be whipped into shape in a talking head and he's like and they don't worry about that they call me devo because i can whip them good and as he's saying is like that's not great <laughs> what i just said <laughs> um so yeah and then cuts back to the office he's like obviously make sure the content's perfect too oh and 12 point font 13 is just obnoxious <laughs> <laughs> if you so, if you've never seen Ryan Gosling's SNL sketch about papyrus, do yourself a favor and look it up. It's absolutely hilarious. Yeah, it's it is arguably one of the best SNL digital shorts um probably ever. He's like because it's talking about the avatar <laughs> branding. It's like it's just papyrus. <laughs> they paid a graphic designer. <laughs> To put this together. But why? And, why papyrus? And when he's driving down the street and he looks into an apartment and he sees Kyle Mooney. I think it's Kyle Mooney. Yeah, it was. Straight at him and going, papyrus. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. I think I think uh, everybody else could leave SNL probably. And if Keenan Thompson and Kyle Mooney stayed forever, I would be happy. Sure. They're the best. The best um all right so then uh ben confronts ellis um asking about uh putting the pictures up on the website and uh, ellis one of the interns responds like oh yeah i started doing them <laughs> uh and uh he's like well are you gonna finish he's like oh later man and he leaves and uh and then uh Ben looks uh, as he's walking back, he sees a poster that somebody had made of him, a caricature with a stick up his butt. And he pulls it down and he's very frustrated. Uh, and April then says, I think you really look good, except for the stick up your butt. Uh, did, and, did, this, did the stick say font? Yes. Yeah. Uh, and so then uh, Ben is like, who do you think did it? Was it Nathaniel Ellis? Then don't respect me. Um, and then April's like, maybe you should loosen up on the font stuff and everything in general. Um, and so Ben is like, they're totally replaceable. I'm their boss. I should just fire them. So he calls Jen, who's his boss and says, I'm having a problem with these interns. Uh, and, uh, and then he finds out that they're super connected to Congress people, the secretary of defense, Donald Rumsfeld, um, Ben Bernanke, the head of the federal, uh, reserve at one point, um, all of these people are super connected. So instead of firing them, he's going to try to kiss up to them. 
And uh, so then he cuts back and he's throwing a pizza party. So guess what is in these boxes, everybody? Pizza. That's right. Everybody chill out. Take a pizza break on me. Uh, and this is where he gets super cringy. Yeah. Um, because... He's- yeah, Adam Scott at his best is when he's either nervous or trying way too hard to be cool. Yes. So he comes to Ellis. He's like, Ellis, what's up, my male? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 it broke. That broke me the first time I saw it. What's up, my male? I have never heard anybody talk to anybody about like, in that way. <laughs> what's up, my male? Have you? I mean, no, it sounds like mammal. What's up, my male? Oh, it dri- it drove me crazy. Um, and uh, and then uh, he sees that Ellis is looking at a, a picture of Ultimate Frisbee on his computer. He's like, "Hey, did you play Ultimate?" And he's like, "Yeah, Intramural at Georgetown." He's like, "Dude, so did I in college." Um, and he pulls response that you guys should get married. <laughs> um, and so then Ben has the great idea. Let's uh, let's play tomorrow in the park. And he invites everybody to come and uh, do some. Uh, <laughs> this is what he says. We should lock down some tight disc grabs in my right elbows. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, um, and so he invites everyone tomorrow morning, pre-work ultimate in the park. Everyone's invited. What do you say? Let's do it to it, my dudes. <laughs> <laughs> Which again, <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it to it, my dudes. Um, so I say this all the time when it, that is one that always like when it's like tech, we got to do some chores around the house. We got to do something that nobody really wants to do. I'm going to try to motivate. How, how's the, how's the reaction? Mixed. Mixed. <laughs> <laughs> so let's do it, do it, my dudes. And then uh, c- cuts to them the next day in the park. And Ben is hyping everybody up. Um, and, uh, you know, my favorite lines here are something awesome happens. He says, someone, please tell me we Kodak that moment. <laughs> Uh, yeah, rock to that scuba. Yes, <laughs> that's that's my favorite right there. <laughs> rock rock that, that scuba. Hundred percent is a scuba. <laughs> I don't know. Um, and then uh, April, uh, he asked what what's the score, and April says a thousand to seven. Um, yeah, so it's going great, going great. Uh, and then come back in and into the office, and Ellis is uh, in the coffee. Uh, in the break room, it looks like, and Ben comes in and he tries to do the Rob Schneider making copies elbow. thing from SNL. <laughs> SNL, yeah, he calls him Elbow, El Chupacabra, drinking coffee, <laughs> and Ellis just like totally confused and doesn't know what's happening. Um, and so he's like, "Ah, oh, that's it's from forty years ago." No, never mind. Um, and uh, so he's like, "That was really fun." He's like, "Yeah, wow." And then Ben sees another poster. Uh, of him with a stick up his butt, but this time playing ultimate. <laughs> and so he's like, you asked Ellis, did you draw that? And I was like, no, I didn't. But uh, it comes to find out that Ellis says, I think your daughter did it. <laughs> and he's like, what? And he's like, her points at April. <laughs> and he's like, April's not my daughter. <laughs> she's my friend. Does everyone think she's my daughter? Um, and April's just like, sorry, dad. <laughs> I love the waves of like, just, everything that's dawning on Ben at the same time, like Ellis didn't do it. April did it. I, the betrayal, but wait, everyone thinks she's my daughter. Like all, yeah. all three of these things at the same time. Yeah. It's a definite pile on. So, yeah. So he's upset. He's frustrated. And we cut to him in his office and April comes in and he's like, here's that report you wanted boss. And it's got 30 fonts on it. <laughs> and so, um, and, and April's trying to make a joke to win Ben back over. I was like, do you like it? He's like, yeah, it's hilarious. Um, and so she says, I'm, I drew those t- pictures. I'm sorry. I was just messing around. And Ben was like, look, I take this job seriously. It's important to me. And you should take it seriously because I asked you to come here because I thought you'd enjoy it. And you just need to give at least 15% effort. <laughs> First response, 12%. <laughs> 15. Oh, this isn't a negotiation. <laughs> um, and so April agrees to 15%. When he pays her this compliment too, he says like, I, I thought you could not just because you'd enjoy it, but you're smart as well. Right, right. Like you can do this. Yeah. So it's a chance for April to get out of Pawnee, which she's expressed like she wants, like uh, she hates Pawnee. Yeah. And so, like, get out of town, 
get a new experience, grow in uh, in her understanding of government and politics and all this stuff. Like it's a great opportunity for her. Uh, and so it was very kind of Ben to invite her to to his team. Um, yeah, so she agrees to give fifteen percent. Um, and then the uh, the credit scene, we see a transformed April. As Ellis is on the phone and says, "Yeah, I love cupcakes." And April grabs his cell phone and says, "Ellis hates you, and he has herpes." <laughs> um and and he's like what's your problem i just love april so much here she says my problem is you smell us ben told you to finish the website and if you don't do it i swear to god i'm gonna murder you in your sleep i know where you live 14th street right i'm gonna get a melon baller and scoop out your eyes and eat them and your congressman uncle is gonna have to buy you a dog to drag your eyeless face around do you understand me and alice yes do it and then she leans in and delicately kisses him on the forehead. <laughs> it's a different management style. Yeah. And Ben sees this from his office. Yeah. So, and it's like, all right, that's 15%. Right. I'd hate to see a hundred. <laughs> right. Yes. Um, yeah. That's. Uh, um, okay. Sorry. I, I was just looking at my, my notes here and in the text field at the bottom of this it says dig 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 and i don't know why dig over and over again so i uh, got distracted <clears throat> yeah that's, so when that's, andy, that's when andy was trying to cross the finish line maybe he needed to dig deep. dig deep um yeah maybe that's it so uh yeah so this was a this, a, this was a fun one yeah, there were a lot of good jokes. Um, the as far as like the arc and the plot and everything, like we kind of already talked about it. Yeah, it, it's not really. It's, it's kind of, I guess, kind of self-contained. But at the same time, you know, some of the like Ben and April stuff. But this one is just kind of a bridge one. You know, it's like a stepping stone episode to a, the larger arc for this the series. Right. Um, I do think it's interesting that we had one episode where Leslie is the city council person without any major drama. And now in the second episode, she's being recalled <laughs> or, or the, the first inklings of her recall is, has come up. Yeah. Well, it's not going to be, I mean, art imitates life in a lot of different ways. And one of the ways that we're going to see this in our own life again is every new presidential election, they're going to say, you need to impeach this president like day, like no, January 22nd. <laughs> impeach impeach the president because now we've we've realized how easy it is to impeach a president twice in one term sure <laughs> so it's not it should just be on the it should just be on the ballot like yeah. before Dude. they're even <laughs> would you like to vote in him as impeached already <laughs> let's just save some time here that's right i i hate this guy it's a pre pay impeachment right. pre impeachment pre impeachment all right i think we have a lot of good ideas here yeah. so yeah which listener what were you going to say? I was, was going to ask you, what you, like, yeah, how, how did you, I know you, you enjoyed this episode. What'd you think? Um, yeah, I think it's great. I would like uh, a spinoff. I know later on we're going to get Ben uh, a little less political and more into board games um, as his career choice. Uh, but I also uh, would love to see more of him playing ultimate. <laughs> right. Maybe as an ultimate coach. Um, like it would be, a good uh it would be cool to see him and ellis like finally like come together as a unlikely pairing but they win the ultimate intramural championship between congressional interns i don't know like, <laughs> he's, he's, he's ellis's like coach lasso to to yes, ellis's to jamie, jamie. To yes jamie. Yeah. yes oh th this was probably all the seeds for that first season of Ted Lasso, <laughs> we're right here. And Jason Sudeikis was watching it with, with the guy who plays Beard and was like, yeah, this is it, right? This is it. This is the magic we're looking for. Um, but could we do it without Ultimate, which is a, a sport maybe people don't know exists? It's like, yeah, all right, what do we got? How about soccer? Another sport very few people know exists. <laughs> yeah, not a lot of people know about that one. <laughs> we can make it popular. Yeah. Oh, you know, one of the other things I was thinking about for this episode, or maybe just the series in general, but this episode really highlights it, I felt, is that outside of like the office, they they kind of did this with, um, shoot, Michael and oh, what's her face at the end of his arc. But like Holly? the couple, Holly, yeah, like the couple, they, they survive, they're independent, like they have these independent lives and yet they're like, they're not super... Like Jim and Pam always kind of had to be together. 
mm-hmm. which is fine. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it, but I think this is one of those series where it's like with Ben and Leslie being apart, but being, you know, autonomous and, and being able to kind of live their own lives and make their own decisions. I like, I like that, um, Ben and April were away from their significant others and that wasn't the issue like that, that didn't cause the problems, but mm-hmm. it gave them independence to be their own character for a little bit. And I, I don't know why I just, I just noticed, I was like, uh, you know, they're, they're all their own, their own people and they don't have to have their significant other around in order to be who they are. So, right. Yeah. yeah. That's good. 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 There you, go. there you go. So what's next? What's our, what's our next episode? Well, and you know, that's a good question. Mm-hmm. I did uh, just close my IMDb browser window down. So do you have it in front of you? Well, the good thing is, is like, as you're saying that you were buying me time to get my IMDb open and um, mm-hmm. let you know that the next episode is how a bill becomes a law. Wow. We should yeah. just watch this and the, uh, can, uh, what is it? Schoolhouse Rock. Schoolhouse Rock. Yeah. Let's watch them both. Okay. I probably won't do that, but uh, I think that's all on Disney Plus if you want to look at uh, Schoolhouse Rock. I'm just a bill on Capitol Hill. So, yeah, that was my public school education cartoons and film strips. (laughs) That's really was. And half days. (laughs) Oh, man. I would kill for the amount of half days my kids get right now. (laughs) I was like sitting in school till 3.15, just staring at the clock from 1 o'clock to 3.15 going, it can't be two more hours and 15 minutes of this. Ah, uh, man. And then. And now they no. get half days. So many half days. And teacher and service days. And I love teachers. But come on, man. <laughs> this many in service days. That's what I don't know. are for. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Teach, you know, figure out how to teach on your own time, I guess. <laughs> oh, Yeah. Why not? I take that. My, my, my mom is a teacher. So, you know, I, know. I, I'm not, I am for, I'm pro, te- we teach. I'm pro teacher. I am also pro teacher. So I'm like semi pro teacher. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> You're in the minor yeah. leagues. I am. I am. So awesome. I saw somebody on Twitter said <laughs> being an adjunct is just like a really expensive hobby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, how dare you say the truth so clearly? <laughs> So I see myself in that tweet. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah. All right. All well, right. listener, we'll see y'all later. Um, I have to go get a child from not school. So sounds good. Have fun. All right. Talk to you later. Bye.